Today is a very special day. This is the day that has been set aside to honor our 2021 graduates. We want to celebrate everyone and share in their outstanding accomplishments and also let them know that Antioch East Baptist Church is so very proud of them. We wish them every success as they go forward with God in their lives to finalize their dreams. Our honorees will come in their own way. My name is Kiana Marie Springer and I graduated from preschool. And now I'm going to kindergarten. My name is Kamari Iman Springer. I just graduated from preschool. Now I'm off to kindergarten. Yay! Hello, my Antioch East Baptist Church family. My name is Sydney Simone Umrani. My parents' names are Hakeem and Danielle Umrani. My grandparents' names are the late Simon Parker and Mother Janora Elizabeth Parker. I attended Cambridge Academy. I graduated from the fifth grade. My favorite subject is reading. While attending Cambridge Academy, I, I earn principal's list every year. In the fall, I will be attending Cedar Grove Middle School in the fall. I graduated from fifth grade, going to fifth grade, May A B on the road, and, and my middle school is Hayfield Charter Academy. My name is Karen Crawford. I graduated from Austin Road Elementary. I'll be going to Austin Road Middle. I received the SOAR Award a Certificate of Achievement from President Joe Biden. Thank you. Hello, my Antioch East Baptist Church family. My name is Isaiah Umrani. My parents are Hakeem and Danielle Umrani. My grandparents are the late Simon and mother Janora Elizabeth Parker. I, I attended Cedar Grove Middle School this, this year. I graduated from the eighth grade. I earned an honor roll and principal's list on in all of my classes. In the fall, I'll be attending Stevenson High School. Hi, my name is Joshua Sellers. My parents are Dr. Joanna Lowe Sellers and Deacon Donald Sellers Sr. I recently graduated from Georgia State University with a bachelor's degree in elementary education focusing on special education with a minor in economics. In the fall, I plan to attend Augusta University with a major in applied developmental psychology where I plan to become a school psychologist. Thank you. My name is Ebony Samuel and I am the daughter of Arthur and Co. Florence Samuel. I am graduating from Emory University with a bachelor's degree of science in anthropology and human biology. While at Emory, I participated in the Voices of Inner String Gospel Choir Residence Hall Association, Volunteer at Emory, and the Emory Reads Tutoring Program. I plan to apply to graduate school in the fall. Thank you, graduates. On behalf of Pastor Smith, the Youth Department, the CYF, we present to you the Antioch East Baptist Church 2021 graduates. To God be the glory for his continuing blessings on each of them and their families. Thank you.
Good morning. Welcome to Antioch East Baptist Church. I'm Senior Pastor Michael A. Smith, and it's a blessing to be with you all again on this wonderful Sunday. I want to remind everyone that great day of celebration here at Antioch East Baptist Church, July the 11th at 1030 a.m. In this sanctuary where I am, as you see, I'm still in the sanctuary. We're moving closer and closer to the pulpit. We're almost there, but I want you to know we need for you to be with us. Now, if you're not comfortable coming out on that day, we understand, but I promise you every provision is being made to keep proximity, make sure that we have our mask on in our celebration. And I understand those, I don't need a mask. I've been totally vaccinated. We understand that, but it's gonna be our protocol with CDC that we will wear our mask in celebration. But that doesn't stop us. It doesn't stop us from going forth with God's word. So I'm saying, come on, come on. We're gonna be on the inside, giving God the praise that would extend on the outside. It's a celebration for us, to all of our members, our viewers that have been committed and have followed us throughout this time that we have been in the pandemic and to the new faces that have joined us today. It is truly favorable to have you all with us. We want to say to our graduates, this is your day. It's your day, and we celebrate you. Those who have continued to stay in the grind, those who did not give up, even during this time that we have been challenged, we had to forge ahead in trusting God with his will and his way. And I want to say to my graduates, to our graduates, Congratulations. We know that it has not been an easy journey, but God is good. He is mighty good. So again, we want to say to our graduates, a job well done. I, I thought for a moment, what would be appropriate word to bring to you all today that would keep you encouraged and let you know that you're not alone and let you know that your work was not in vain and moving to the next level, whatever that is, we are trusting God with you. So I, I want us to pray before we go into God's word. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Almighty. Thank you for the opportunity of praise. Thank you for the opportunity of glory. Thank you, Father, for showing mercy and grace upon those that have gone across the threshold and tool another stage of their lives. Lord, we pray over all of our members. We pray over all of our viewers. We, we pray over those we know and those we are yet to meet and those that we will never meet in this lifetime. 
but we ask for your glory to be upon them, Jesus. And in your name we pray. Amen. You know, I know it's not easy being able to be committed to your studies, being able to stay balanced with all the things in life that are distracting you and all those things that are calling for you to be a part of. You're multitasking. You're trying your best to stay afloat. You're trying to stay ahead. And you want to give your best. And there are some of us that say, I just barely got by. I'm just grateful to get by. I don't want you to just be satisfied with that because you put work in this and it is deserving to be acknowledged today. I want us to go to the book of Samuel. And I, I want us to go to 1 Samuel. I thought if there was anyone in the Bible that would show us what it is to be a graduate, moving to the next level, it is the prophet Samuel. Please take your word and let's go to 1 Samuel, the first chapter, verses 21 through 22. And it reads, then their counter went up with the, all his family to offer the yearly sacrifice to the Lord and pay his vow. Hannah did not go up because she had told her husband, as soon as the child is weaned, I'll take him to appear in the Lord's presence and remain there forever. This particular scripture, it focuses in on many students a husband and wife that are students that would graduate to a level that they never expected, to a little boy who knows not yet what is going on in his life. And even before he came into existence, Hannah had prayed for a child and had been told by the prophet Eli that next year during this time, she would be with child. But even before she had a baby in her womb, she had already claimed victory and said, I will bring this child back to the Lord, I will dedicate him. See, celebration today is about dedication. And in this particular scripture, I want to talk to you for a moment, just for a moment to talk about God's word, the next station to your destination. The next station to your destination. You understand in life, we're going through so many stations, you know, we're born, we learn how to crawl, then we learn how to walk. And as life goes on, as we become older, and in our older years, they say, once a man, but twice a child, or twice a baby. We're forever graduating in this life. And I want to say to our graduates today, through all your sweat, blood, and tears, it is being recognized. Even when you wanted to give up, even when you didn't see an end to the means, God was with you. And because of your commitment, because of your zeal, you were able to forge ahead. We give God all the glory. But I do want you to know, you are not going unnoticed. But Samuel, we go back even to the beginning of him and his household. His father and mother were devoted to God. Every year they would go up and they would make a vow up in shallow and just his father, he would go on behalf of the household and pray over his household. And it stated that he prayed for Hannah. He had prayed for his wife to become a mother. See, Hannah hadn't graduated yet. She hadn't graduated to that level of motherhood. She was a barren woman. What that means is that she was without child. She was not able to conceive. Hannah continued to stay focused in the Lord and continued to believe that I'm going to continue to cry out. See, before you're able to graduate to the next level, you got to make sure you got that knowledge of where you are now. I find with Hannah that when she calls on the Lord, she understands too, she's ready for a new station to her destination. She's ready to be a mother, but she understands it won't happen until God says. Sometimes people are observing us and they see that Something is going on within us, and they charge judges like you are when you start out in school. You have teachers that are looking at you as students and seeing what your abilities are and what your limitations or challenges are so they can be able to hone in on that. Well, that's how Hannah was treated. She was a student being observed by her fellow classmates, the other women, seeing that she could not conceive. But we find that God will elevate you 
when he's ready to elevate. God will seize the moment for you when he's ready to seize the moment. I want you to know, if you graduate from pre-K all the way through college and getting your master's or doctorate, whatever the level is, BA, BS, whatever you're pursuing, high school graduates, I, I want you to know middle school. I want you to know, even in primary, God has you. But not only that, well deserved. Mission accomplished for this station, but it's time for you to move to another station. There's three little nuggets I want you to have today. There's three of them. The first nugget I want you young people to have is, or not even only the young, we got some seasoned saints that are graduating from school. We want to say congratulations to you. But the first nugget I want you to hold on is that your steps have been ordered. When you were brought into this world, your parents or family members began prophesizing over this. This is going to be another athlete. This is going to be another doctor. It's going to be another lawyer, another business individual, an entrepreneur. It's going to be someone that makes mighty footprints in the sands. This is going to be our next scientist. It's going to be our next president of these United States. See, people have already tried to order your steps for you. This is what Hannah did. Hannah had already ordered the steps of Samuel. She had already committed him. When he is older, once he has winged from me, and once he has been taught from that moment, it's time for him to go to a new station. See, Samuel's steps had already been ordered that he would be turned over into the hands of the prophet Eli and up in shallow, and she will leave him there. And it says, even in that verse that you all read, and you look at that and we focus in on that, we see that it says in the 22nd verse, her final statement was, as soon as the child weaned, I'll take him to appear in the Lord's presence and remain there forever. Hannah wasn't talking about herself remaining there. She was talking about her child. She wanted her child to receive the education from the Lord that he had in store. Young people, you have received the education God has restored in you for this moment in time. You couldn't have done it without God. Your steps had already been ordered. I want you to understand is that our scripture, even when it focuses in on the word, it lets you know. It lets you know the next station to your destination. What have you planned in your life? What is your true aspiration? What have you decided to pursue through your college years? What is your degree in? What are you high school students thinking about? after this is college. How have you prepared to our middle schools that are getting ready to go into high school? How have you prepared yourself for the next station? Middle school is quite different from high school. Preschool is quite different from primary school. And primary is different from middle school. I want you to understand today that your steps have already been ordered because that's just what God does. It is in some 119 and 133, and it says, order my steps in thy word, and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. Not any iniquity. My steps are ordered by your word, God. I want to say, young people, it's not you. And I, and I want to say to our graduates, because it is you send as well, and we're focusing on our graduates. I, I want our graduates to know you couldn't have done it without God. You couldn't have done it without mom and dad and grandmom and grandpa and our aunts and uncles and our godmothers and godfathers and our village and our community because they had already prayed that your step will be ordered. But what I want to say to you, as you go to the next station to your destination, remember what you have learned throughout this process. Just please remember. The second nugget I, I like for you to take with you is that Surviving against the odds. There's so many statistics stating that who will finish high school, who will drop out at an early age from school, and who will not be able to finish. Those statistics have already been in place. They've already had a projection for 2020, 2021, already getting ready to go to 2021 and 2022. But I want you to know that God will show you favor against the odds. You are standing right now. You are celebrating right now because you went against the odds. So many find a reason not to finish their education. 
But I want you to understand there are those that wish they would have had the opportunity. I've spoken with many of my members that are seniors, and I've spoken with many of my members that didn't have the opportunity to pursue school. They had to drop out because they were needed at home to take care of the farmer. They were needed at home to take care of emergencies in the household. It was so unfair to them. But at the same time, well, that was the way of life for many. But I want you to know, even when it seemed like the odds were against you when you were taking those exams or when you had to study or when you were in class and it seemed like it was not coming to you, it seemed like the odds were against you. But I want to tell you, you're a living testimony today that God has seen you through. The next station to your destination, we're constantly moving in life. Constantly moving. When you finish one level, there's another level to climb until we're called home to God. I don't care what the odds are right now that you have in your mind or someone has tried to implant in you. God will always rise up against the odds. And if you and his care, young people, our graduates of all ages, you know it is through the grace of God that you are before. So even with Samuel, you, you think about Samuel, the odds were against him because his mother was never supposed to have conceived. The odds was against him because he was being turned over into the hands of the prophet Eli. Eli had two sons. So what were the chances that Samuel would become the prophet of the land? You never know what God is doing when the odds are against you. They're against you because when you make it, you can be that testimony and say, when the odds were against me, it was only favor that was upon me. And I was determined to excel. Young people, we got to be determined. We got to be. So I, I want you to know, even with Samuel, it said that Samuel was a young child. When he came into the hands and up under the leadership and the mentorship of Eli, it even said that Hannah made him a little coach. She would come up and visit him. And she left a little coat with him, an ephod, as a little preacher, as a little priest. See, his steps was already ordered. And even though the odds seemed to be against him, his mother knew the favor of God was upon him. In Isaiah 58 and 11, and the Lord shall guide thee continually and satisfy the soul in drought and make fat thy bones and thou shalt be like a water garden and like a spring of water whose water fell not. What it means is that God will continually be with you, even when things are dried out, even when it seems like the land has no harvest, even when it feels like that everything, and when it talks about the fat on the bones, what it means is an increase. God has increased you today, graduates. That's why we're able to celebrate. He's increased your territory. Many are trying to decide what are they going to do from this point. There are those that said, I'm going to take a break. Many say, I'm going to take a time out. I'm on a hiatus. I don't need this anymore. I've had enough school. But I want you to know, you'll be surprised that your educators that sit in the classroom and said, I know they can make it if they just believe. And I don't want you to give up now. You don't know how many educators were praying over you when you left their classroom. How many of your parents are a sigh relief? He or she made it. How many spouses have seen their spouses go to school and they've been holding down the household and saying, thank you, Jesus. How many children are admiration to see their parents to be able to graduate? But how many young of, of our young that are across the threshold and getting ready to start their new life in the world is wide open for them? Just know. Even when the odds are against you, God is for you. The last nugget I want you to have with you is your greater promotion come from on high. The greater promotion come on. You think this is it? For those that are finishing out college or they've gone on for higher education, eventually you come into the workforce, not knowing what waits for you trying to get in alignment with the right job, want to make sure that all things on your vision board panned out. But I want you to know, all of this is the new station to your destination. 
There's always a newness that's upon us. There's always a new information that is given to us. The promotion you got, the promotion that you have taken pride in, you hold up your shingle, you hold up your certificate and say, I have graduated. You should be proud because we're proud of you. But I want you to know the greatest promotion comes from on high. It is God who promotes us. And even in God's word, Psalm 75, and that is six through seven. Psalm 75, six through seven. For promotion come neither from the east nor from the west, nor from the south, but God is the judge. He put it down one and set it up another. I want you to know that God has set you up. He's given you an opportunity to know that he got you. Giving you the opportunity to let you know that you say you thought you could make it, but I saw you through. Letting you know, young people, as you sit around and you look at the photographs that have been taken by your loved ones, that they're so proud of you and they wanted to get a picture with you. They want to get a picture with you because, first of all, they understand. They understand what you've gone through. They understand that it is God who has sent you through. They knew that your steps were ordered by God. They also knew the odds were against you. But then they know the greatest promotion came from on high. And the greatest promotion that they could ever expect is when they pray to God and say, God, cover my family member. Cover my friend. Cover this individual. They are already asking God for promotion on your behalf. I want to say today to all of our graduates, we are proud of you. We, your Antioch East family, we celebrate your life. We celebrate your past, your present, and we look forward to your future. It comes from Ohio. The word tells us in the first Samuel 3 and 20, I want you to know what it says. And all Israel from Dan, even from Bathsheba, knew that Samuel was established to be the prophet of the Lord. See, that promotion came from the Lord. God took one down. He took Eli down because Eli did not treasure his education. He did not treasure what God had instilled in him. He did not hold the other students, his pupils, accountable. His pupil was his son as they interrupted God's household and they had to pay the price. I want you to know that if you don't treasure the knowledge that you have gained and you utilize it, don't give out and don't give in. Great things await for you. You've got to believe within yourself that God got it. But you got to believe, too. You can do all things as Apostle Paul said, through Christ which strengthens me. Or your promotion is on high. We're on a high today because of you all. I want to thank God. Thank God for those of our ministry with the educational ministry. I want to thank you for what you do because you ensure that our students are noticed and they are acknowledged. And also we celebrate them because of your hard work, and your due diligence in being faithful. So we wanna thank you for that. I want to leave this with you. With all these different stations Samuel had to go through from his mother's womb to being weaned from his mother and his father, being placed in shallow, up under the tutelage of Eli, not knowing what it is to be a priest. He had to be trained as a prophet and he was being taught. But while Eli was falling from the grace of God because he didn't take his education seriously enough, God removed him and put Samuel as the prophet. And when God elevates you into your graduation, people recognize. They recognize who you are and what you've given to God. I want to discuss Jesus for a minute, just for a moment. Our Lord and Savior, if anybody knew about graduation, it was he. It was him. He knew, he knew what it was to be able to graduate. He came into this world as a babe. He graduated 12 years old in the synagogue. He moved from the synagogue into doing the ministry that God had for him. He was elevated from that ministry and we found that he was on a cross. He had to get a promotion 
coming from amongst the people until the cross. He graduated from the cross into the tomb. And from the tomb, he graduated into the resurrection. From the resurrection, he's graduated on high to sit on the right side of the Father, which are in heaven. I want to say to you, our graduates, you ain't seen nothing yet. Get ready, get ready, get ready, because God is going to blow your mind. Your work is not in vain. We thank you. We thank God for Samuel, for what Samuel has done. We thank God for our almighty Savior, Jesus Christ. If there was a true graduate moving from one station to the next to their destination, it was Jesus Christ. So we say move to your destination. Be ready and know that God will give you the true promotion. To our graduates again, to all of our viewers, it's a blessing. It's a blessing to be able to know that we don't move from one station to the next without Jesus. So we give it all to you. We praise you, Lord. Does somebody need to graduate today? Somebody need to graduate into the family of Jesus. If you haven't given your life to him, check yourself. You stayed out of class too long this time for you to be promoted. And when you get promoted in the house of Jesus, you don't have to do it one time. Come to him. Give your life to him. Say, God, I'm empty. Say, God, I, I, I need you. Say, some way, somehow, God, I know if I'm a faithful student to you, you will move me from one station to the next to my destination. And my final destination is to be with Jesus. So at this time, for anyone that want to become a part of Angie Hockey's Baptist Church, we say, come on. Come on. It's a new station to the true destination. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, bless those that desire to give their lives to you. Someone is saying, Lord, I've been out of class too long. I haven't gotten my diploma yet, and I, I want to graduate and be a part of your family. And the way I do that, Lord, is that I come to you. And I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus, and I believe in my heart God has raised him from the dead, and I'm saved. We celebrate today, Lord. Not only our students that have accomplished so much in the classroom in this world, but those that are prepared for the classroom of eternity. We thank you. So we receive them accordingly. Lord, be with us all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Time is filled with swift transition. No.
will seek to gain your heavenly treasure. They will never pass away. You ought to hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. Oh, to his hand. God's unchanging hand. Feel your hopes on things eternal. Oh, to God's unchanging hand. Let me say this again. Trust in him who will never leave you. Whatsoever he may bring, will give by earthly friends forsaken. Still more closely to him cling. Well, you ought to hold to his hand, God's unchanging hand. Hold to his hand, God's unchanging hand. Feel your hopes on things eternal. Oh. To God's unchanging I want to say thank you for joining us today. We pray that you got something out of this word and to our graduates again. God bless you. God bless you. God be with you in your future endeavors. I always know, always know that your steps have been ordered. Know that even if the odds are against you, that promotion comes from Ohio. I'm proud of you all. And I pray you remember your true promotion with Jesus Christ. And as Apostle Paul said, as we close out with our benediction, and we want everyone to know how much we love them. Finally, brethren, farewell. Be perfect. Be of good comfort. Be of one mind and live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with us. Until the next time, to God be the glory. Amen.